Hello everybody, this is Alexandre from Angel Culture MNC and welcome on our weekly Le Normand video. It's a pleasure to, um, to have you with me today and to have a little chat about the cards and also to reply to a couple of questions that the uh, subscribers have been asking. And also at the end, I'm going to pull some cards uh, to see the energy of the week and what we can learn from the cards and what the guidance and lessons that they want really to convey to us, okay? So I will start with uh, thanking each and every one of you who have been subscribing lately uh, to the channel, okay? Since um, this week, we have got uh, a, a nice number of subscribers coming along, and this shows your interest into the channel, into the Lenormand Oracle, and how to use it properly, and how to enjoy its wisdom, okay? So um, the chapter of today is about clearing and charging your cards, okay? So this is a question that comes a lot when I'm uh, giving classes or when people are watching my video, they ask me, do you clear your cards, do you charge them? Do you have a special uh, magical ceremony that you do? So I'm going to answer this question now. So when I get uh, a deck of card, um, I usually clear it because, you know, the cards are like uh, energetic sponges and they take on energy. And before a deck comes into your hand, it had been, you know, manipulated by uh, more than 10 people from the printers, from the people who do the shipping, from, you know, all these hands had been touching the cards. And it's like, you know, um, the cards has taken the imprint and you need to clear that before you can work with it uh, nicely and properly. So there are various methods that you can use to do that. I usually use uh, white sage because I use, you know, methods that are um, quick, you know, effective and powerful. And uh, because I do a lot of reading and I tend to clear my cards between each readings because I don't want the, um, the previous reading to influence my um, next one, my new one. And uh, because I also let my client, when I'm doing face-to-face -face readings, I let my client pick the cards, cut the deck, so they leave their energy in there too. So this is why I clear them. Okay, so white sage is very simple. You just, you know, light the sage and then you uh, pass over, you smudge your cards. And I use a lot of uh, visual visualizations, sorry. I, you know, I look at the cards and I, and I visualize that the old energy is drawn away by the smoke and it disappears in the air. Okay, another example that I will use also, um, when I, when, I, when I can't actually light, you know, sage and uh, smudge my cards, I also like to smudge the area that I'm reading to ensure that everything is, you know, is clear and is protected. Uh, the second one, when I can't use sage or candles, I will use a crystal. Okay, I have um, a little crystal that has been with me for many, many years. I bought that back when I was in South Africa in 2004. Yeah, 2004. It was before my wedding. And I discovered the wisdom of crystals there in South Africa. And uh, I visited a crystal shop. And from there, I had bought some crystal, and the the lady, the owner of the um, the shop, to whom I have given a reading, had gifted me, you know, with a little uh, amethyst. Okay, amethyst is good for all that is, you know, um, for the psyche, for the third eye, for the intuition, for dreams, and she had given me this. Um, these crystals, okay, and she had cleared it and charged it beforehand, and uh, she had told me to put, to put an intention in that crystal, and my intention was actually to uh, so uh, to that crystal that I'm 
getting will help me in clearing my cards so after reading often if i don't have time to smudge or do any longer ceremony i will just take the crystal and put that on the top of my deck okay and let it sit there and the um, the crystal will absorb and transmute the energy and then later on on the next full moon i will expose this crystal i do that you know every month and i clear all my crystal to ensure that they are you know clear vibrant and effective so these are little things that you can do to clear your cards and i also believe the, in the power of prayer if you know me i am an angel person i like to pray i like to meditate and often i will use prayer you know as i shuffle the cards i will ask that all the old energy is lifted away by the higher spirits by my spirit guide by my angels and i will also you know bless the cards when i'm shuffling okay something that you need to understand is that the the important part in card reading is not the is not the reading itself it what you do beforehand okay what you do to prepare yourself and um, when I'm shuffling it is the most important part because there I will put my intention in the cards I will you know name my question I will name my clients name and date of birth you know and during this shuffling oftentimes it is you know the, the time that I prepare myself it's like you are diving and before diving, you prepare yourself and you put all your equipment on, checking that everything is good before you go deep down. Same here. I will shuffle the cards and oftentimes I will have visions or I will see things about the client that is in addition with what the card will tell me. Always, you know, uh, couple your card reading with what you feel. Everything that you feel, hear and see, when you shuffle your card is part of the other reading there is no coincidence okay for instance um, you could actually uh, shuffle your cards and then your eyes get like attracted to something in the room that you're reading for for me for example last time i was uh, or doing a reading and a woman come for her mother who had some health issues and uh, she just told me I want to know about my mom so I shuffled the cards and I you know prepare myself and suddenly I was attracted to the calendar that was on my wall it's it's a normal calendar but this time it the image was real really crisp it's it, it it looks like I have a new eye on the calendar and the month of July really pops up and July in French is Juliet it could be Juliet and so I told her is your mom's name Juliet and she said yes her name is Juliet so you see how the cards will bring in you know the wisdom it's not only the cards himself but all the atmosphere and all the the state of you know upliftment that you put yourself okay so this was the part one of the video where we talk about uh uh, the topic of the week and it was about clearing your cards now you know how to do that and then we will go to the question of the uh, of the subscriber so i had um an interesting question because i have you know since last week I've told the subscribers you can do that as well that they can actually post a question in the comment but a question not about free readings or that, this kind of thing but really a question that will help each and every one of us to understand more uh, the technique of card reading and how you know how it can be mastered you know any question questions sorry relevant to your apprenticeship of the Lenormand and to get better and better at it so the question was uh, is it you know a good idea for people to uh, do the cards for themselves and how can someone be objective and not you know be uh, like you know projecting their own desire like wishful thinkings you know so the first uh, part of the question I will answer that yes everyone can uh, draw the cards because we are all intuitive 
okay? Uh, I see intuition as something that is embedded in, in every one of us. It's like the animal instinct, you know? Um, before the evolution of humankind, you know, we all have this, uh, this you know, uh, intuitive side in us that will help us find our way, uh, actually, you know, be aware of dangers, and uh, really, you know, use that I instinct to survive. And now in our modern life, we don't need that anymore because we are relatively safe where we live. There is no, you know, wild animals that will come in the house and eat you like it was, you know, uh, centuries ago. And it seems like, you know, it's, 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 for me, it's a muscle that when you don't use it, it softens, you know, you don't have this, uh, power like you used to use it a lot and the more you use it the more it, it increases it and it develops and it becomes you know stronger and more um, powerful so yeah each and every one of us can draw the cards okay so some people will do that very quickly you know effortlessly and some other people you know will struggle it's like at school you know there were people who were very good with math and um, all the people who were very good in English and vice versa. So same thing here, we each have our ability and our talent, but generally, you know, everyone can read the cards. Any person on earth can learn to read, you know, read books. And same here, it's a language, so everyone can uh, learn it. So how to not project your, your wish through card readings, you know, seeing what you want to see. So the first thing that I will say is that when you draw the cards, you should be a specific about the number of cards that you would want to, to draw and to stick to this number no matter what. Don't try to pull cards till you see what you want to see or you, what you want the cards to tell you, okay? It's cheating, okay? I have a video on that on the three common mistakes that readers would do and it's about a card clarifier so you don't pull more card than needed okay so if, if there is a little uh, sound in the camera just know that it's rain okay since the first of January we have heavy rain non-stop till today so it's making a lot and I'm really wanting the Sun to come back you know I can't go even to the beach it's you know it's cold and it's unusual for the month of January here in the Southern Hemisphere to have this type of, of weather. So sorry, go, so back to our question. So yeah, how not to project it is not to draw too many cards. Then you should not, you know, pull the cards in uh, a state of drama. You just close the window here to make sure that's not, you know, much going on with the sound hope it's 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 good and i'm using a, a new microphone as well so i hope that plus finger is that everything is good so yes uh don't draw cards when you are a, in a state of drama you should not draw the cards when you are in a state of you know of weakness you when when something you know bad had fallen on your up on your head and you rush to the cards, you know, the cards are sometimes you know mirrors and they will reflect only the drama and you know the negative or strong energy that you are in. So when you ha when you are dealing with an issue, don't go to the cards too early, you know. Just have all the information that you need beforehand, you know. See every aspect of the situation let the pressure calm down okay and then you know you can go to the cards and you will get objective reply okay and if you still don't feel yourself you know uh, able to read for yourself in this situation you can you know go to a trusted reader or you can find you know on facebook that there is a lot of you know the norman group and they will be happy to you know answer to your question so don't you know don't rush into the cards and uh whatever the cards you know are telling you 
it's that you know don't try to modify it and you know try to look at the cards as if you were reading for someone else not for yourself pretend that you are reading for someone but the person that you're reading is not you and you know you will have a detached um, overview of the, of the situation so this is very important but in general you know all readers can read it for themselves. This was a very old belief, particularly in uh, in France, because I'm French. You know, I don't know for other part of, of you know of uh, of the world. There was a belief that you should not buy your own deck of cards; that someone needs to gift you with your deck for you to be able to read it. So this is more of a legend, and uh, also reading for yourself is. You know breaking the law it's not you know it's not fair you should a reader is not able to read for himself and this is again a legend if you're able to read for people you will you will be able to read for yourself but the slight difference is you need to be objective and also to stick to whatever the cards has to tell you Okay, for this week reading, I will not stick to a free card reading. I will actually use the cro the cross spread. So this is a, a, a popular, you know, uh, Lenormand spread used uh, in Europe, actually. And many Lenormand readers, you know, um, loved it. I really love it too, because it gives you a different perspective. It's not like the Celtic cross in the Tarot. And the difference is with Tarot, you can read a card, you know, isolately, you know. But with Lenormand, it's more of a combination, you know. Position one and two will tell you something. Position two and three will tell you something. Whereas, you know, in the Tarot, position one is past and you will frame the card card into the past uh, structure, the second card into the now, the present structure, and then the, the third one, the future, will be, you know, framed into the future. And in Le Normand, you can't actually, you know, read one card only. You need, it's the combination of cards that really makes it wonderful and beautiful and also, you know, com complex also for people. This is why many Le Normand are many tarot readers who want to learn the Lenormand has difficulties because they are boxed in their tarot system and you know going into the Lenormand seems to be a little bit complicated but you know you can you know you need to have time and dedication and you know be serious about it and really put the system you know uh, distinct not to mix them together it will not work so for this uh, week, you can see the card that I've pulled. We have the moon in the center. We have the star and stork top and bottom. And we have the key and rider from uh, left to right, okay? So this is telling us that this week is a week of intuition. With the moon, the moon for me is the card of intuition. It's the card of dreams. It's the card of the instinct. And yeah, it seems like you're... Uh, with the two elevation card, I call them with the star and the stork. These are cards that brings you, you know, upper. And these two cards are really showing that your intuition is coming more and more powerful. Okay, it is bringing you to different realm and to, into different world, and you need to open yourself to that. With the key and the rider, of course, the key opens up the gateway of knowledge and wisdom that the cards are giving you and the writer is you know powerfully um bringing you forward you know like charge forward with your intuition don't you know doubt so this week pay attention to whatever signs and symbol that you are receiving because the stars are the card for the signs pay attention to the emotions to the uh, impression that are coming to you because these are very powerful and these comes from the upper realm the stars okay uh, if you pay attention to your intuition you will be able to unlock you know block situation uh stuck points and you know the divine or your intuition will really point in the right direction to you and with the rider it is coming you know very rapidly it's very strong it's very quick 
maybe you know this is why you're not understanding you know your intuitive hits because it comes in very rapidly and it goes you know very fast so things are moving very rapidly very high this week for you and really it's a week that your problems will find solution and that you will be the master of your life so i hope that this uh, weekly video had uh, helped you you know to understand some part of the lenormand system and also that, that the question the uh, subscriber had asked had helped you to understand certain aspect of things and also that the weekly reading had brought much you know information to you so i'm going to keep that you know like it is each week i will be there sitting with you we are like you know having a a cup of tea it's it, it's a really a place of sharing okay you will sit there with no um no like you know complication simply sitting there i will bring on bring up a topic and we will talk about that of course it's a topic that i am you know intuitively directed to i will let the cards lead me to this topic and then i will take of course a question from a subscriber you know english or french whatever in any case the video that i'm doing you know in french and in english they are basically the same but you know in french we need to talk a little bit more to explain things you know uh, in, in english the language is short and clear and you know cut and in, and in french it's more of you know that there is a lot more of grammar a lot more of phrasing so this is why maybe you, you could see a difference between the two but the content is the same and uh, in English you know it will be more cozy like you know direct discussion talking directly to people and with French it's a little bit more you know academic you know it's two different realm okay so in any case stick with me you will learn a lot just by watching just by listening to the to the videos okay and if you are new to uh, to my channel you uh, can subscribe now you can also visit my websites in english and french angelcartermancy.com for the english one and le normand extraordinaire dot wordpress dot com for the french version and uh, the spread that i've used the, the cross spread is also available in my upcoming book with Schiffer Publishing, The Art of Le Normand Reading. And you can pre-order your copies now on Amazon. And the deck that I have been working uh, today with was the 2018 Le Normand Oracle Cards, okay? So have a wonderful week. I am under the ring, unfortunately, but I will keep on, you know, um, talking with you and look forward to our next video next Sunday. Bye.